Pet Life Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Is your pet stressed out? Does your pet need annual vaccines? Which pet is best for a child? Would you know if your dog was in pain? Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor, where you'll learn everything about keeping your pet healthy and happy. From pet care, pet meds and grooming, to pet food, pet insurance and dental care, this is the place to find out everything there is to know about pet wellness. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets because it's your pet. Health matters. Please welcome your pet doctor host, veterinarian media consultant and veterinarian, Dr. Bernadine Cruz. It's a feeling, eyes boring into your very soul. You're helpless. You're compelled to follow the commands that are flooding into your consciousness. Your hands tremble as you reach for that something that could have dire consequences. Who's controlling your actions? Some nefarious predator? No, it's your cat or dog trying to con you out of something from your plate. A little bit won't hurt, or will it? Maybe your pet isn't feeling well and you want to avoid a trip to the veterinarian. You can give something that you take yourself for the same symptoms, but is a little bit going to be okay, or could it hurt? Now there's an app that's easy to use, reliable, and answer your questions about what you can and shouldn't give your pet. It was created by my guest, veterinarian Dr. Mari Delaney. We'll be right back after this short break and talk about this great app. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. When we put him on the Dynavite, he took right to it. All of these symptoms disappeared. Dynavite is nutrition. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. Something that he actually likes to eat. You need to put him on Dynavite. Dynavite for life. If you love your dog, you don't just want him healthy, you want him to be happy. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Dr. Delaney, this is an awesome idea. So, (laughs) question for you. How common is accidental poisoning of pets? Because that's what this app is all about. Yeah, it's really, it's a problem that we deal with almost daily because we have people who either want to share their food, as you mentioned, and perhaps give something that's too fatty or too salty, that kind of thing. And we usually, at least once a week, we're dealing with a inappropriate medication where somebody wants to help their pet if they're in pain, and they end up giving them something that's toxic to the cat or dog. What are some of the most common toxics? You mentioned a little bit about food and medications, but um, okay, let's talk about food because yes, our pets sit there and they look at you with those cute little eyes and go, come on now, just a little bit of X. Or sometimes, you know, people are college kids. They have that dog or cat in their dorm room or they're having a party and it's like, yeah, let's give them a little bit of THC, let's give them a little bit of CBD oil, or how about some beer? Oh, are these uh, <laughs> yeah? Are these substances a problem for pets? Absolutely, yeah. Um, well, THC um, is definitely something that is not appropriate for dogs and cats. We see with them typically accidental overdosing where they get into a stash or if you're growing then they might chew on the leaves so that is it's definitely something that the side effects they're all over the place with that so they can get really hyper then they get almost comatose and anywhere in between so that that's the big major issue as far as cbd that we're still doing quite a lot of research on that in veterinary medicine and it's an awesome thought because we do use it for problems like arthritis, anxiety issues. So there, and there are a lot of new ways that we're thinking about using it, but we just don't have the science yet to say this is good for this. So um, we're still kind of working on that. But and like you're saying, the alcohol, beer, or, you know, vodka or whatever, this too will affect the liver of your dog or cat. Dogs are more likely to eat beer than cats or drink beer than cats. Although I've 
seen cats who were a little bit, you know, tipsy <laughs> too. So we just don't recommend it because their systems just can't handle that kind of stuff. So you have somebody who has been conned out of treats from their pet. And we know that obesity is a real problem. But sometimes it's hard to tell just a little bit if that's going to cause an issue right now. So what would be some of the common signs that people might see if a pet were going to be having an immediate reaction to some type of a food substance that they gave them? Typically, if it's something that's that toxic, you're going to see almost immediate vomiting or vomiting within the first hour. Sometimes you can see vomiting and diarrhea right away, which is horrible, obviously. Other things like chocolate, for instance, um, are neurotoxins. So if they eat a large amount of that, they're going to, they can have seizures, they can go into comas, they can even die from that. So the things that are really toxic for them, usually you'll know fairly quickly food wise. With the drugs, that's a different thing entirely because the individual that I actually started the thought process for developing the app was an Aleve toxicity. And, you know, the owner, as you said, gave his dog the human dose of Aleve two days in a row and she came very close to dying from that but you you wouldn't have known it when he brought her in she looked okay but her kidneys were starting to fail and she was starting to get a bleeding ulcer so it, it can be tricky and that's where i think the app is helpful because when you input whatever it is you want to know about it pops up with the adverse effects if there are any and it also gives kind of an estimate of the vet bill because i think people yeah, kind of stop yeah. and take notice when they see oh if i give them a leave it could cost me ten thousand dollars <laughs> that's <laughs> your saving has just gone down the tubes yes <laughs> exactly <laughs> so yeah why i find it interesting is Dogs and cats are always being brought to my practice. And it's, yes, typically the dogs that like to eat first, think later, get themselves into all sorts of problems. Cats are normally a little bit more fastidious. But going through veterinary school, going through the journals now of the way that toxins will affect a dog or a cat or even a bird are so different. So your app is one that you can just have on your phone at all times, correct? Maybe we should talk a little bit about your app. Tell us about what it's called, and how it works. Well, it's called Vet Protect, and it's $2.99, uh, available through Google or Android and Apple, the iOS form. It is available in English and Spanish, and we're working on a French version now as well. It's very simple to use. Once you install it in your phone, there's a Start Here button, and you bring up the app. I can actually do that right now if you want me to <laughs> sure, you can tell me. So let me give you something and then you tell me whether or not it's toxic so people can't see this so i will say oh, okay. that okay i am having dinner and i'm having some mexican food and my dog is sitting there looking at me those cute little eyes and says oh i need some guacamole on that chip is that okay for me to give a labrador retriever some guacamole what do you do now well, you type in, and actually that's a good one because I don't have guacamole in my app yet. Okay. Can you believe that? <laughs> but I know that guacamole is made using garlic. Okay. And garlic, if you look that one up, it will say severe anemia and death <laughs> and a pretty high vet bill. So garlic being in the onion family, garlic, shallots, onions are all very toxic and as it turns out garlic is the most toxic of all of those and then some people are probably listening going i've given my dog garlic to kill fleas for years (laughs) and i've never had a problem Mm -hmm. how do you respond to something like that well i mean it's variable everything is individual so a certain pet or patient will respond in a really bad way other ones not so much usually the garlic will cause some kidney issues as well and over time i have seen patients i had a actually this uh, adorable little italian couple and they fed their beagle actual cloves of garlic 
And when I met them, I, I actually walked into the exam room and this big cloud of garlic <laughs> hit me. And they said, we give garlic for fleas. And I said, I know. <laughs> and they were so sweet. But, um, I, you know, we did do a little chemistry panel, checked her values. And her kidneys were not the happiest kidneys ever. So we uh, were able to kind of ease her out of that. But it's, yeah, it's very individual how folks respond to things. What would be some of the common foods that you have listed in your app? Well, I have pretty much all fruits and vegetables, tofus in there, meats, all different kinds of meats, pretty much anything you can think of. I Jello, <laughs> all different kinds of things. Yeah, and people also can ask. So if they're looking something up in the app and they don't find what they're looking for, they can just email me. If you don't see it, email, and then I will review it and research it and put it in the app. So I love this. That it's so interactive. I'm eating something, and if it's not on that list, probably the safest thing to do is not give it until you get feedback from you. So for two ninety nine, I have direct access to you, mm-hmm. and you keep updating this app. That's fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I I really want it to be useful. I want it to save lives. You know, that's the whole idea. So this is basically dogs and cats. Dogs probably being the one that get themselves into the most problem. (laughs) But how about things like birds? I saw on your picture that you had a chinchilla on your shoulder. So do you also, does this app also address other species? Not yet. Not yet. It's always growing and always building. So I do plan on expanding into more exotics. Well, what we would call exotics, you know, but pocket pets, all those kinds of kids. But I see everybody here. We see obviously small animals. But I do reptiles and birds and and the chinchilla, obviously. Just neutered a guinea pig last week. <laughs> I give you great credit for being doing that one. All right. So here we have an app that you can take with you any place, any time. Something like this being used in the evening or weekends when your veterinarian is not available or you just start being frugal and don't feel like calling to make that appointment. What are some of the common over-the-counter medications that can cause problems. You had mentioned Aleve, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, but what are some of the other medications that maybe you didn't plan on giving, but were just there in the house that your pet may have gotten into that can really be problematic? Right. There are actually quite a few. The non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are, are very popularly given accidentally, I would call it, because Advil, uh, usually the pet is running around on the weekend, steps in a hole or whatever they do and ends up limping. And this is where I hope people will go, oh, wait a minute, let me make sure that this is safe before I give it. There's also, I've, I've been learning a lot about human medications as well. I have the top 150 most prescribed drugs in the United States on the app as well as the over the counters and there are some interesting things that humans can take that are just tremendously toxic to our pets there's an over the counter um, urinary oh i forget what it's called though so this probably isn't good for this but it is relieves urinary symptoms for humans but is really toxic to animals so this is there's just a ton of items that are out there and that seem okay, but in fact, for dogs and cats, because they metabolize things so differently, are just not safe. Are there are some there safe some medications safe? there listed that you can give? I don't really have that yet. I have aspirin is in there, but like it, it says sort of in a pinch kind of a thing. And to get the proper dose, I, I really think people should be speaking with their own veterinarian. So I, I, it's definitely not meant to replace your veterinarian. It, it's for the impulses, the situation where you really want to help, but you're, you're not quite sure if it's the right thing to do. What have been some of the crazy questions that you've gotten from people where they say, it's not in here, but boy, my pet really likes X. Is it okay? I think the weirdest one so far is glow sticks. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It, it kind of started out the app really, you know, because you get an idea in your brain and this is what it's going to be. But then other people have their things and so it's it's pretty eclectic at this point as far as what's in there so originally i'm like okay food and drugs but now i have glow sticks sago palm seeds you know just the uh, odd things and i i didn't really get the story on the glow sticks but, but i did research them and they're quite toxic if your dog chews them up it'll be a disaster so <laughs> Once again, a canine issue, I think. <laughs> so we have drugs that are listed in there, foods that are listed in there, anything else that a pet owner could access, and you have glow sticks, yes. <laughs> um, I've also started putting more plants as well, toxic and non-toxic plants. That's a pretty big category, so that's just going to take some time as I go through them and add them. In the meanwhile, of course, ASPCA.org has an awesome website too, so I'll refer people to that as well. Is that listed yes. there in your app where it says, oh, ASPCA, so they know they can immediately link to it? I do not have that yet, but that's a great idea. <laughs> Thank you. One, you're welcome. One of the things I always find so frustrating when a client has a toxic situation, it just happened the other day with me, where a client saw her dog all of a sudden have this bright green pellet in its mouth, and oh, she no. knew that it was rodenticide. <laughs> She had not put it out in her yard, so she was, it was understandable, she could not bring in the packaging itself. Right. But so many times people will bring in an object that is going to be toxic to their pet, brings mm -hmm. in their pet, but doesn't bring in the container. So you right. don't know. So it's like there are different types of rodenticides. Some there's an antidote for, some there's not. She was able to find out what it was. The long and short of it, the dog did okay. But I really hope that people listening to this, if your pet gets into something it shouldn't, it's been chewing on a plant in the yard, it got into some of your medication, it got into a, a box of chocolate, whatever else, always bring that along with you to the veterinarian so they can see, oh, it's milk chocolate or it's milk flavored, milk chocolate flavored. Or no, it's a dark chocolate, one of those really fabulous truffles. <laughs> what did your pet get into? Because knowing that it can really make a difference in saving your pet's life and saving time. Absolutely. It makes an enormous difference for all of us. And in the app, the various toxicities of the types of chocolate are in there. So dark chocolate being the worst and then going down to white chocolate, which is, you know, really high in sugar, <laughs> but otherwise, okay. <laughs> so I, I try to do some nutrition in the app as well to, to try to help people to do like healthy snacks, carrots baby carrots things like that instead of like a oh what are those little snossage things you know stuff that is is good for you instead of junk food now i was also going to your website and see that you have a blog tell us a little bit about the blog that you have that's really very helpful too oh thank you i like to write so i try to think of topics that I think would be interesting and, and helpful to people to try to explain things in a manner that's easy to understand and also to tell people why I recommend things because just because you know somebody recommends that's great but you, I like to know who exactly it is and why do they think they know what they're doing and all the rest of that kind of thing so I have these blogs in there to educate people and some of them are fun you know I did a uh, dog's point of view on the 4th of July, which <laughs> was kind of fun to do. And a lot of people liked it. But I do a lot about nutrition and about fighting obesity in our pets because it's, it's a big problem. You know, we're all treating much, many more diabetics than we used to, I'm sure. <laughs> I know we are here. So, and that's a lot of it is food motivated. So. Well, I'm chatting right now with Dr. Mari Delaney. She is a veterinarian who's come up with a fabulous app that can really help save your pet's life. We're going to be right back after this short break and talk about more things that your pet can try to con you out of or get into that can be problematic. Be right back. Please have a seat in the waiting room. 
The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com Welcome back to the Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. The doctor is in, and we'll see you now. So, Dr. Mari, this app, I think, can really be a major lifesaver. If nothing else, save some money because you're not going to the veterinarian and having the bills. I think that's a very interesting (laughs) feature of your app. So you're mentioning some of the plants that you're starting to put in there. What Mm -hmm. are some common plants? Because I know several years ago, I was shocked. I was doing a, I was writing an article about toxic plants in your backyard. I thought, I'm just Mm going to go in my backyard and and take a look that was there. And thankfully, toxic doesn't always mean dead. It can just mean a really upset stomach, vomiting, Mm -hmm. diarrhea, just uh, not feeling good. And I was shocked and very thankful that my dog was not one that liked to (laughs) nibble on plants because it's like, oh, "Oh, that one's a problem. Oh, that one's a problem. Oh, oh, Mm -hmm. can't have that one. So what are some of the common plants that people may not think about that are in their backyard? Some for dogs, if you can mention some for dogs and some for cats. Yeah, it's very common, like you said, for people to um, have things out in the back and not really know what they are. Uh, And that's a big thing as well. People will thankfully bring in the plant that they ripped out of the ground and say, is this bad? And nine times out of 10, it's usually something pretty toxic. We see um, lilies, of course, are very toxic, all different types. So, and they're beautiful too. So a lot of people have them planted, but the, I do have some patients who really like to chew on them. And so sadly I have people ripping out their lilies because (laughs) the the pet won't stop chewing. And that's cats as well as dogs, because the cats seem to be attracted to the sort of grass-like looking leaves. So they will sort of gnaw on them as well. We have, uh, we're in upstate New York here, and we have a lot of nightshade family. So stuff that is like digitalis toxicity, you know, very strong. Affects uh, the heart. Toxicity heart. affects the heart, exactly. And if they eat enough of it, it's fatal. The education part, trying to learn what all the plants look like, and then I, I just recommend people not plant toxic things. Unfortunately, a lot of the popular things are toxic. We uh, rhododendrons are unhealthy. Azalea. Um, Oh, yeah, really bad. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of the most beautiful things, unfortunately, are bad for the kids to chew on. So actually, I don't know if you, um, tomato plants themselves are toxic. The fruit is not, but the plant is. So it's tricky, you know, people have to kind of be on their toes. And that's another way where the app will come in. Although, like I said, the plants, it's not that huge yet of a database for that. One of the things I see with pets with having toxins around the house that they may not think about, or they're trying to be very safe. So they'll have something and they hide it away in the cupboard, or they have that rat bait and it's behind the refrigerator Way in the back, their pet could never get to it. And it's amazing what these animals will do. I would love you to talk about rat bait very quickly because that is a a common issue. And then maybe even something like the insecticides that we'll use on our pets because we're trying to control parasites, ticks, fleas, etc., heartworm. But sometimes people do things that aren't the smartest of a little bit on a dog. Oh, I can put some of that on a cat. 
Right, right. And it is that is a big issue. Absolutely. The rodenticide toxicities, um, we start to see here around this time of year when it starts getting cooler, and the little varmints want to come in the house. I recommend to my clients not to use them at all. So if they have a problem with that, I say you can go well, get a cat. Cats are very helpful for <laughs> mouse problems. So if you don't have a cat, there you go. Or they have little have a heart traps for mice, little tiny. I don't know if you've ever seen a have a heart trap. Yeah, so they make little they just kind of fall well. in and they get stuck, and then you can take yeah, them someplace they get else caught. to your neighbor's house. Right. I tend to drive them about a mile away and let them go because I figure if they can make it back for a mile, then they can live there. You know, they deserve it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, I, I completely understand. But the baits, the toxic baits that exist, are it, the risk is too great. If they eat it and the people don't know, they can bleed to death or they can ha go into horrendous seizures, depending on the type of bait, as you mentioned. So, you know, I just tell people it is not worth the risk. And there and are the alternatives. Bear. It can be also scary because your cat, who might be a fairly decent mouser, but <laughs> you have your rodenticides out or maybe your neighbor has it out. Now your cat goes along goes, hey, this mouse isn't running around too quickly. I can catch this one. So now your cat eats that rodent. It now gets exposed to it. Or if you have raptors and it finds a mouse that's trying to die, it eats that mouse. It affects both of them. So now your raptor dies, your cat dies. Right. It really is not better living through chemistry. Definitely not. Definitely not. Those types of things, I don't think they have a place anymore, really, because we, we can do better. We can do safer things. And I mean, I understand the ease of it. And that's kind of the problem, too, because it's, it is very easy to put that behind your refrigerator and forget about it. And then two months later, you know, Buffy Fluffy goes back there, manages to turn himself into one inch thick and gets it. You know, it's amazing what they can do. Like you said, I, I see it all the time and people say, oh, I forgot. But that's not helping with the, you know, the $5,000 vet bill we now have because we need transfusions and we need all these terrible things. So the Vet Protect app that you have, does it have insecticides in there also? It has some. It has some. The rodenticides are in there. So, yeah, it did talks about that. There are some chemicals, too. Like I said, I'm starting to branch out more from the original food and drugs thought process. So it's just it's building organically, I would say. So, so here you are a veterinarian, and I have to admit computers are kind of a mystery to me. That's brain <laughs> surgery. I don't go there. How did you come up with this app? You said you had a dog that got into a leave mm -hmm. and then you went from there to having this app. I know there's a lot <laughs> of steps in between. Right. Well, I was, you know, treating her and you're frequently here later in the evening when you're dealing with these kinds of cases. So in between checking her kidneys and making sure her fluids were correct, I thought, you know, I bet there's an app for this because that would be so easy. You know, if we had that, you just hit it and you go, oh, I shouldn't do this. I won't give my beloved pet a leave. So I looked for an app and I didn't find one. <laughs> so I was like, huh. So I checked around and, and the data is out there, but there's just a tremendous variety of, of destinations that you can get to on the web. And some of it is wonderful and fabulous and some of it is not. And they all look great. You know, if you go to a web page, you don't see bad web pages anymore. They all look spectacular, but you have to get to the fine print to really know if these people know what they're talking about. So I thought the app would be a nice idea because it would be right there on your phone. Pretty much everybody has a smartphone now. I can't even remember not having one at this point. So it's, uh, it, I figured it would just be an easy way to help people not accidentally hurt their pets and to help keep them healthy. And you keep mentioning a leave. And yes, a leave is yeah, non-steroidal. <laughs> There are others that can cause problems. So there's ibuprofen, acetaminophen, and yes, all these can be problematic. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not just these pain relievers, but has a little bit of an upset stomach and you want to give something like an intestinal protectant, Pepto-Bismol. Well, for cats, mm -hmm. it doesn't always go down as the best thing for right. it. 
because <laughs> of the aspirin type compounds that are in there. Yeah. So cats and dogs are definitely not the same. And I know that your app really breaks it down that, okay, for a dog, you might be able to get away with it. A cat, don't even think about it. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Pepto is a great example. And I do have that on the app as well, because like you said, of the aspirin compounds in there, I typically recommend not using it and going with like Maalox or Mylanta. They tend to be sort of mint flavored and actually cats tolerate that a little better. <laughs> so yeah, once again, getting the right amount, I, I do like people to refer with their own vets to get dosing because, you know, not seeing the patient, I have no idea what size they are and what's appropriate or if they're older and they, they can't have things mixed together. It's just like people, you know, you really need to converse with your own doctor before doing anything. Perfect. If you had to have your parting remarks, what do you want these pet owner listeners to take away from knowing there is an app called Vet Protect? What do they need to know? I would just love them to know that it's there for them, that it's all the time getting new information, always building people's recommendations. I research everything. I love doing it. I just want people to know that they have something at their fingertips that could help them keep their pet healthy and live a nice long life. And that's what we want for all our kids. So thank you very much, Dr. Mari Delaney, Vet Protect. If you have questions, you can hit that button, find out whether or not you should give some to your pet. Always talk to your veterinarian and Thank you so much for being a guest today. We do appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Cruz. I'm delighted to be here. So this is Dr. Bernadine Cruz. You've been listening to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. Please tune in again next week. We'll give you more information on how to make you the best possible pet owners. And if you have those little eyes boring into your soul, wanting to get food from your table, check with Vet Protect first. Take care. (laughs) Pets can be a wonderful addition to your life because they're a member of the family. Keeping them healthy and happy is important. Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor with veterinary media consultant and veterinarian Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets. The Pet Doctor, on demand every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com.